every now and then you get a project that just sucks. And this is one of them. Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. Today I'm going to start work on a project I've been wanting to do for more than a year now and that's make a vacuum table for my CNC machine. I've got an upcoming project that uh, I need to hold some thin material flat so I thought now is a good time to uh, make a vacuum table. Now I've been wanting to do this ever since a gentleman called Michael who was visiting New Zealand with his family stopped in we spent an evening chatting about CNC machines and he showed me a vacuum table he'd made for his one. It was really interesting and I thought I must make one for mine. So this is my attempt at uh, building a vacuum table. If uh, it doesn't work, I'm afraid to say it's uh, my fault because I don't remember the major details other than one that he told me about. And uh, that I will be incorporating into it. But how hard can a vacuum table be? I've got some scrap MDF lying about so uh, I'm going to use that and I've got a vacuum tape cleaner to power it with so uh, what could possibly go wrong? Okay let's start the build. I'm machining the base plate from 18mm MDF. After drilling a hole in each corner I then machine channels to distribute the vacuum. With the channels cut, I machine an open area which will form a chamber where the vacuum will be introduced. I've left some raised areas to prevent the top plate from collapsing under the vacuum. And finally, I cut out the bottom plate. Next I machine the top plate for the vacuum chamber and this is where the vacuum will be introduced. Now I've gone through the base and I've made some modifications. Originally when I machined it I left some bits of MDF in here, three, three pieces and I realized that was a mistake. So I've removed them and I've machined this piece here, which is what I should have done in the first place. And it will just fit in here like so. I'm gonna glue this in place. And that will allow air entering into this area here through the vacuum hose to pass under it and into this area here. I have the uh, vacuum top cover here where the inlet goes. That's going to go here, and this ring of MDF will go on it like this. So now, I can glue this together, and we can give it a quick test. It's time to run the first test on my base here, and see how I've done with my building. If I've calculated it right, adding this vacuum hose into here will not load up the vacuum, because of course everything is open here. So really what I'm doing is making sure the galleries I made in this area here are big enough to pass all the air through to the base. And the way I'm going to do that is by simply plugging the motor in, the vacuum in to the inlet port here and listen for a change of pitch coming from the vacuum cleaner. If I've got it right, the pitch of the motor will not change. If I've got it wrong, of course, I'll hear it load up. Let's give it a try. So that's the vacuum running normally. And that's it running under load from the tabletop here. And as you can tell, hopefully you can tell, there's no change in motor pitch, so it's not being loaded. Okay, next test. I've got a piece of MDF here. I'm gonna put it on the table there and it's sucking this down and there's a slight change of pitch coming from the motor but not much only very slightly so my galleries here in the tabletop are pretty good next 
I've turned my MDF round. Now I'm covering all the holes in the base and I can definitely hear the vacuum loading up. Okay, let's see if I can pull this in. God, that took a bit of force to pull that MDF across the tabletop there, which is excellent. Most of the cutting forces when I'm cutting with this will be in a sideways direction. And the fact that that was so hard to move is really encouraging. I think it's going to be a good idea to move on to make the plan. I'm cutting the platen from 18mm MDF. I've drilled a hole in it for alignment to the base. Okay, so it's official. I have screwed up. When I made the platen here, I uh, drilled into it a reference hole, which I put in the wrong place, which simply turns it into a hole. Now, to fix this, I've removed the platen. And I've made sure that this here is nice and square to the table by using my parallel rule. Now here's the original cross I made on the plate. And right in the center of there is the original X0, Y0 position. So I've taken my cutter back to here, put in that position, and zeroed my axis. I've then moved the cutter off to 320 millimeters in the X direction, left it at uh, Y0. And that's where I want to put my reference hole. That's what I should have done in the first place. So I can now reposition and mount this back down onto the table. Once I've got it screwed in place, I'll re-drill this hole here, which will give me the correct reference. I've noted it down on the tabletop here, where it is, so that I know for next time and if I ever need to reset the cutter down, I won't have a problem doing that in the future. What's more, it'll be in the right place. Okay, well that's not going to go anywhere. Let's get our new hole drilled here. Okay, well that's one quick reference hole. And now it'll be simple to reset this jig on the table. And now that I know exactly where it is, I'm going to finish machining the platen. I'm going to put the new pod holes on it, and also I'm going to put the through holes into the channels so the air can be pulled into those pod positions. Now one of the things I need to do here is I need to secure this down in the centers as well, because this board bows up and the more pressure you put on these outside bolts the more it tends to bend the wood like this so I've got mounting points that I'm going to be using on the ends here or to ensure that this is always nice and flat down on the table now if you're wondering about what this little tab here is on the side it is a position that I can put my touch off plate if I want to reference it to the surface of the material here without having to remove the material first because of course this tabletop area is quite small so this is a guaranteed area that will be the same level as the rest of the board that I can put this here on and get a measurement. The pods for my platen are made up of 462 holes, each of them 16 millimeters or 5 8 in diameter, and I'm machining them 12.7 millimeters or half an inch deep. It takes three of them to make up one square inch. Well, now all my holes here are pocketed out. They are 16 millimeters or 5 8 in diameter, and they're half an inch deep, or just a little bit over about 12.7 millimeters deep into the material here. That leaves about 5 millimeters of material left to cut through. And for that, I only use one of these. Now, I don't know how well that will show up, 
but that is a 1.1 millimeter cutter make it around about 90 thousandths of an inch and I'm going to use that to drill the holes through and into those channels I made in the base here while I'm doing that I'm going to keep the vacuum from the vacuum cleaner running on this board to suck any material that comes out the bottom of the hole away so it doesn't get blocked so why am I using a 1.1 millimeter drill instead of something like a quarter inch? Well the size hole I drill here will have make absolutely no difference to the amount of vacuum I manage to pull on the tabletop. It's the diameter of the large pockets that I've made that will determine my vacuum. By keeping that hole small it will take longer for the vacuum to build up in that area though not too long but I will have to uncover a lot of those holes before I lose vacuum on even a small proportion of the table so by keeping those holes small I don't need to worry about cutting through and opening up areas because I'm only opening a very small area and an incredibly small hole Thanks for the tip, Michael. Okay, so now I've struck a bit of a problem. You might remember that I took a piece of MDF early on, put it on, and let it vacuum down, and uh, checked that the vacuum cleaner came under load, which it did, and it worked perfectly fine. But now, it doesn't do that anymore, and you won't believe why. The vacuum cleaners virtually turned the base into Swiss cheese. So unless I'm sadly mistaken about physics, flames should go up. But when I bring it down to here, it's going down. And if I remove the hose, it comes back up again. <laughs> Now the fact that it's happening on both slots when the vacuum cleaner is attached and of course not when it's not attached means there's air being pulled somewhere here and there are absolutely no holes in this base through to the slots here which means it has to be pulling right through the MDF right through the uh, hard surface of the MDF and accumulating in these slots here unbelievable now I should point out when I was originally looking for the air leak I used one of these here an incense stick rather than a naked flame but the naked flame does show off very well what's happening here and uh, I'm really surprised that it's able to suck air through that compacted uh, surface of the MDF now I know they do use MDF on uh, vacuum tables but I'd always assume that they'd skim that hard surface off. Just goes to show you, maybe they don't. Now watch carefully because this is really interesting. So that last experiment was really telling. It explains a lot about what's been going on. Now by blocking off these ports here, the vacuum should have remained self-contained in this area here, but it didn't it was traveling through that bottom five millimeters of mdf that's about three sixteenth and exiting out through the hardened surface underneath that's incredibly telling and unbelievable to be honest and if i actually do the smoke test which is more sensitive than the uh, flame test i can detect it ducking down here as well so it's actually not only exiting here it's traveling along further and down through there I would never have thought that this would be a problem. So I need to come up with a solution. I may need to change the bottom substrate or I may need to find some way of sealing what I've got. I'll have a think about it over the next week. But this is a problem that I didn't recognize for what it was. I started losing a bit of vacuum and I thought, oh, I've just got a bad joint somewhere. So I put sealer around the outside edge here. I added an O-ring up here to where the hose went in. But 
it just kept losing. I get a small gain and then all of a sudden it's gone again and I haven't known what it was. Now I understand what's been happening. The base here has been deteriorating and becoming more porous as time goes by. So now I understand that, I uh, should be able to get it back on track. Okay, well thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you've uh, enjoyed this episode and um, it might give you something to think about if you're designing your own vacuum table. In the meantime, thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my website www.cncnuts.com In the meantime, cheers. through those toughened layers. So I'm going to have to go back and rethink this. The heavens have opened up as you can hear and uh, I'm going to find it really difficult to even think in a minute. That's it. Brain shut down.